a nice title for you, but I, I like forgot. Um, so what should I do? Like One America News anchor. Do you call yourself anchor these days? I usually say host, host? Um, just because uh, our anchors are something separate. So our anchors usually like will tee off to me and then I've got like a breaking story or um, an interview or something going on in, in D.C. So I usually would go with host because that's a little bit more of a catch all. That's fair. Yeah. Or, or ace reporter. Ace reporter. I like that, too. But I do more than just reporting. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> cool. And we got Tim Lim, our favorite person in the whole world. Hi, Tim. Hello. How you doing? Hello. Tim was on mute. I'm he fine. Can that How's the bunnies? <laughs> the bunnies are great. They're doing yes. fantastic. The ball. And we're finally joined by Brett R. Smith, the yeah. leading colorist in uh, indie comics. How, how, that's a great title. Yeah, right. right now. <laughs> <laughs> just like just like you're the leading uh, Hispanic voice in sci-fi. I love yeah. that. That's fantastic. I like titles for people. Um, yeah, can you I, all got promoted. Is, 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 there, is there like a, another leading uh, Slavic voice? Does, is there, are there any big Slavs in sci-fi? Are, are you hashtag Slavrite? I literally started hashtag Slavrite. You started it. Was it a response to the anime, right? Do you, do you, do you remember this whole no, war? I was, that before, I was way before those guys. You were before, before the before. anime, right? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, I mean, people forget there was like there was hashtag there was hashtag Mexican right at one point. There was yeah, there, there, still, is an Irish, there still is an Irish right. Um, I mean, there's dog right. Yeah, there's do well dog, dog rights right. around now. Yeah, and so <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Tim, of course, is Bonnie right. Um, and then so I was just people were saying, "What are you, Jack? Are you conservative? Are you this? Are you that?" And you say, "No, I'm just I'm slob right. Slob right. Slob right. I love it." Yeah, that was a, that's a piece of internet history from uh, way back in the ancient times uh, known as 2017 mm. uh, that you guys might not remember. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't remember during Slav, the, right? That's, that's, that's a new one. Was that, that was before, that was during and post meme war, correct? That oh, was yeah, like, that was, yeah. yeah during, so that was during the 2016 meme war and then right. the following, yeah. Yeah, I, I got involved in that because uh, uh, Pizza Party Ben, if you recall him, uh, you know, F. Yeah, yeah, he was really the one that started all of it. He was very anti-anime, uh, right? And that uh, that really upset me to my core as, as an anime guy. So, mm. yeah. Hashtag no weebs. Yeah, so sad. <laughs> Hashtag no weebs. But we're here to talk about your beautiful comic today, which I'm going to add this to the stream right here. Uh, oh, and look, at here that. look at that look beauty. At that. Isn't that awesome? Ooh, it looks like we're about to hit 31. See that? I know. You're going to hit 31 during the stream, guaranteed. We are. Let's uh, do it. I guarantee it. Um, and so uh, tell us about your project here. I, I'm so excited just because as soon as Brett's working on anything, I love you, of course, but like as soon as Brett tells me he's like involved in something, I'm just, I'm all in. I'm just like, this is awesome. We got, we got a new page of artwork up today too, if you want to scroll down. So we, we, we did. Uh, unveiled well, page three. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, I mean, show the regular artwork too. Mm hmm um, but then, you know, so that's, you know, page one. And of course, we've got in polluted India and polluted Shanghai uh, in like on the cover in page <laughs> one. Right. And then we're going after eco terrorists. So I, I hope people are starting to understand, you know, kind of the arc of the story that we're, you know, we're, we're being pretty obvious about it for people who are picking up on, on these things. Like the cover shows Shanghai with a polluted yellow sky behind it. It, it ruined my childhood. John, that, I love that opening shot. So it's just it's a, that is such a uh, just gorgeous uh, opening shot that wide shot that um, uh, Sergio inked and our um, we have we have a we have a ghost artist on this he's a very well known artist but he's working under a pen name Ooh. and uh, his name is uh, Lance Sterling that's his pen name but if um, I can't reveal who he is he's a very well known uh, very well respected artist. Um, Oh, I can but, tell you, uh, the detail is just absurd in here. He's um, doing, you yeah. know, Lance is doing the layouts. Sergio is coming in and doing the inks. Um, if I showed you the 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 uh, the roughs, they're they're basically like finished pencils. They're beautiful. But Sergio's put such a nice finish on all this stuff. That's amazing. So, yeah, cool. it's gorgeous, man. It's I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous stuff. So, what's the spiel? How how did this come about, Jack? What, what what's your uh... I mean, I would really kind of have to, I would really kind of have to tee it off to Brett for that question, because I mean, you know, as much as I like to uh, take the blame for everything, this is all Brett's idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Brett's idea. I found that yeah, out yes, uh, back to day one. Very yeah. political answer. You can tell I work in DC. I know who to yeah. blame. <laughs> Jack and I have been friends for probably about a year. Uh, we know, we, uh, I know him through a mutual friend who he used to work with. And we originally talked about just kind of 
designing some merch and doing some stuff. And then it was kind of like, hey, let's um, let's create, let's tell a story, let's let's uh, let's do something, you know, creative and have some fun. And um, you know, hire. Yeah, we did. Well, we did. Um, we did a little, bit, uh, little bit of the old Space Force together. Yeah. That's really uh, where so it started. I'm in, I'm in a couple panels of of Space Force uh, graphic novel, and that's how we really met. And then and then Thump, I met you and Timothy uh, while you guys were doing that. And then we yeah. just have always sort of kept that conversation going. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you've always kind of been into the, like dipping into sci-fi and culture a little bit, a, a little more than uh, most most of the other folk in the political realm. And that's 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 what always attracts me to you, of course. Well, it's actually the yeah. funny thing is is like it's actually the opposite, right? So. I'm I'm obviously more well known for you know quote unquote MAGA Twitter you know conservative media whatever but uh, originally so back when I was still in the intelligence community when I was still in the Navy um, I I still maintain a blog anonymously um, all about Game of Thrones and so my Twitter account going back to 2012 was all about it was sort of like a a cut up of a Game of Thrones super fan who just can't stand the TV show because they love the book so much. And I called it Angry GOT Fan. And so it was. It started off as just sort of a comedy bit. And I thought it was fun. I only tweeted in all caps. And it was had, uh, the catchphrase was <laughs> no, one, no one understands with three A's. So no one understands, you know. And, uh, and you know, so the enemies were like David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. And then the, our hero was George R. R. Martin. But then as the show kept going and like really veered off from the books, it actually started picking up a lot of traction and then, and the blog started getting hundreds of thousands of page views per month. Um, because amazing. it was like, Hey, wait a minute, this guy's actually right. The show is completely, you know, going wrong. And so that was, that was the whole bit. And then it kind of got to the point where the books and the show were just so different that it almost didn't work anymore because they weren't even close enough. There wasn't that uncanny Valley to play with. And so that coincided very early with, uh, Trump's campaign and sort of the start of the meme war. And, you know, I, I went out to the RNC in Cleveland, uh, met a whole bunch of people out there that were involved in the meme war. I uh, was part of, got, was volunteering for the Citizens for Trump group, uh, which Roger Stone was a big part of, and just Simon and Silk and Milo was there and a whole bunch of other people. And, uh, and they all said, hey, Jack, you sh you've got this Twitter account. Like, why don't you just, you know, be yourself on Twitter, start doing politics. And I said, okay, sure. But Time-wise, I've actually been doing sci-fi and media longer than I've been doing politics. That's interesting. And I know you have a, a side Twitter account. It's like it's like Pasobiak Sci-Fi or something like that, right? Is that yeah, you? Or yeah, is yeah. That you? Uh, it was me. I haven't really tweeted on that in a while, but I had like you know just just for sci-fi stuff, just for sci-fi yeah. project. And I've got a whole other uh, sci-fi novel that is the first draft of it's done. It's been yes, something that yes. I worked on when I was in the military, something that I wrote, um, sort of in my downtime on deployments on ship or, uh, when I was during my year at Guantanamo Bay and, uh, just something I worked on for a long time. I want to get it right. So I mean, I've spent, you know, a lot of years working on it. And so once, you know, once this project is done, uh, I want to get, get, you know, get back to that novel. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw you talking about that over the last couple of years and definitely want to encourage more of that. I, I, I think we have a cultural movement finally starting. You know, it's it's obvious like by the fact that this has uh, $30,000 in like 12 days that that we have something growing and it's something awesome. And uh, and and the more the more we push, I think the more we'll be able to actually push back in culture and start to change things. Yeah, you know, uh, Andrew Breitbart's line is repeated over and over. Politics is downstream from culture. Politics is downstream from culture. So he got it right, and everybody sort of agrees that he got it right, but then nobody ever does anything about it, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, so you bad. look out the conservative <laughs> movement, and it's like, hey, guys, so Breitbart told us we should make culture. We should probably go do that. Now, let's just, you know, let's just go, you know, do some more blogs and uh, write essays and all this other stuff. But those things are fine, but... It's really tough the way that... Conservative media has developed. Like conservative media now is just like almost a reactionary thing where it's like, uh, I'm outraged by this because Marvel is is saying Trump is bad or something like that. And like yeah, those yeah, yeah. get a ton of clicks. But then you put up then you put up something like if you know, if I just put up your your uh, thing on my blog and said, Hey, Jack Posobiec's got this awesome new comic. It'll get a lot less clicks than if I like made some outrage post. And so what ended up happening, because I've written a bunch for the Federalist and I would try to promote things like um uh uh, what's his name? Uh, Orson Scott Card actually had a TV show on BYU TV 
Uh, it was called Extinct, and it was this like super cool science fiction show. And it was like wholesome. It promoted it like the, like the family prayed. It promoted Christ in it, and uh, and you know no swearing, no over the top violence or sex or anything like that. I'm like, this is awesome. We want more of this. And I, I tried to get an interview with all the creators of it up on the Federalist, and it, it like it took them like ten months to even approve it because they just knew it wouldn't get clicks. And uh, I, I don't know what to do about that. That frustrates me to my core. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's really something where for a long time there hasn't been that sort of alternative outlet and I think that the the level of frustration though, the level of angst with Hollywood and the woke left and the capitulation to China that's gone on uh from all of these mainstream entertainment companies, you know, um you know, look at we, people don't even realize, you know, we talk about um in terms of Hollywood, they talk about how Red Dawn was completely revamped to make from China to North Korea, but people also don't know that there was supposed to be a Tibetan monk in the Doctor Strange film that they had to cancel, or they would, or Marvel was to, Marvel was told you cannot have that character in this. Is it China? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, I mean I that's no that's idea. like that's like a much more recent example and probably a much more well known example at this point um, than the Red Dawn remake, which is seven years ago. So you would understand that that you know we're, Hollywood is owned by China at this point; they're they're totally owned by them. And so if you want to continue our values and continue promoting American values rather than getting in bed with these, these countries that have a completely different set of values than us, uh, they're communists, they're Confucianists, they have a, a completely different moral code. It's based on hierarchy, not, you know, objective moral right or wrong. Um, and I think that conservatives have totally checked out at this point. And so part of uh, what I think of this particular project as, but other projects as well, is a test bed for a conservative entertainment industry. And long term, the way I look at this is we need to be meeting people where they are. And media is moving into a place where people aren't going to the theater as much, or if they are, they're not bringing the family. They're only seeing one, they're seeing multiples. Uh, movies are coming more like amusement park rides, as Martin Scorsese, I think, accurately uh, said. And people are streaming more. They're in their homes. They're in their entertainment centers. They've got a massive... We've, we've seen a revolution in home entertainment. So why mm -hmm. aren't conservatives trying to meet people where they are by making good quality products, actual quality products with good stories, action, mm -hmm. adventure, cool characters, exotic locations, uh, beautiful women, like my wife, uh, <laughs> who's, who's in the comic, um, <laughs> and, and have a streaming service that says, you know what, it's not, you know, Obama Netflix, you know, and I, I, I think that the president actually was completely right when he called out Obama Netflix as saying, you know, this service is going to fund people and you know, Netflix has, has a lot of uh, toxic accounting problems. They're going to run into a, a cash crunch here pretty soon before they keep fleecing their investors. Um, that we realize that there's a huge market of people that are totally checked out of that industry. And believe it or not, um, I've, I've learned a lot from talking to people and studying how the Christian streaming services operate. Um, from the movie Unplanned, which of course did very well, but also Pure Flix and a lot of the entertainment that's available on there. The fact that they've been able to just check, completely check out, just completely check out of the studio system, completely check out of the Hollywood system and make their own films for their own audience, right? And so people say, oh, but Jack, I don't like Kirk Cameron movies. I don't like it. So, okay, yeah, 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 sure, fine. But that there's a market that, and they've been able to build up around it and support each other to the point where it's it's now a cottage industry that's just totally operating just separate from the mainstream. It's kind of amazing. It, yeah, it doesn't awesome. have to be Kirk Cameron movies, which which is right. And of, nothing against Kirk Cameron. By no, the way. I'm me neither. That's, I, like, that's like a meme that's out there. And and I love Growing Pains, man. I, I grew up watching that show. Um, uh, loved Alan Thicke. Booger was my favorite character. Uh, amazingly enough. But uh, wasn't it Booger? Wasn't that the character on Growing Pains? I think or, so. Or uh, Boner. It was Boner. It uh, wasn't Booger. Booger is Revenge of the Nerds. On <laughs> Booger is Revenge of the Nerds. Boner is Growing Pains. But you're, you know, you, I say that, you know, I always make that joke too. It, it's, it's the B movie, you know, kind of uh, joke, and that's usually what ends up happening with conservative culture when it is made. Typically, it has a smaller budget. It doesn't have, uh, you know, uh, name brand actors. However. 
we do get that every once in a while. You know, we get that with American Sniper. We get that with Lone Survivor. We get that with 13 Hours. These are big budget movies with name brand talent attached to them, the passion. And when, when we do, uh, you know, make these forays into pop culture and you're, you have this in, incredible budget and this amazing creative team like Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper and Sienna Miller, they're hugely successful, you know, uh, you know, you, you, that is, um, uh, unquestionable people, you know, people turn out in droves for these movies. And I've always said, you know, it, it's, it's, it just kind of, it's just kind of, uh, admits it just, it, it just absolutely confuses me. We have these great examples. And recently I think Clint and Sylvester Stallone are great examples of making cultural statements within entertainment, whether it's the mule Sully, uh, Sully's an amazing movie because it's got such an anti-government message. Um, I even watched Francis Ford Coppola's Tucker, the man in his dream the other day. I mean, you couldn't get a more anti-government, you know, basically the government, uh, the big three automakers and the media took down Preston Tucker, who was only trying to make a better, safer car. You know, we want to make great, we want to make better and safer entertainment. We don't want them to be these uh, uh, left-wing quagmires full of SJW messaging. And yeah, and that's the thing, by the way, that. Brett, yeah. um, I want to point that out too about um, about our project, was, which is we're, we're not pushing a political agenda with this thing, right? We're not, we're, we're not you know, you're not going to turn to, uh, you know, page four and suddenly, you know, Agent Poso pulls out a copy of like, you know, a Milton Friedman article or Friedrich Hayek. And what, start, if, what if like, I want that though? What if I want that? Okay, we'll make that for you. We'll make, uh, it depends on what tier you back on, John. All right. Um, <laughs> that's a tier. That's a tier. Brett, make that a tier. Hey, you um, know, you know, it, as long as it's something like that could be worked into the story, you know, and it makes sense within the story and the character, uh, you know, it's like you said, uh, what if I want that? I'm sure you could have that. It's, um, it's, the point but I, being I don't, I don't want to be story too first, not agenda first. It's story yeah. first, not agenda first. Yeah, we want to well, there's a story. Thing, That's why we there's hired a thing Chuck that, um, There's a thing that Jack had mentioned when he was streaming with me two weeks ago that I thought was definitely the selling point. Um, and I thought, I thought a lot of other people who were tuning in thought the same thing too. Uh, for the people listening to the lunch stream, Jack, can you talk a little bit more about kind of the 10-year projection for Agent Poso? Because in my opinion, this is like the perfect way of – how you're able to kind of blend politics into your storytelling without being political. Because what you do with Agent Poso is it's not just like, oh, here's a satire about me and my family and wacky hijinks. You're actually taking what you know in the current um, political and geopolitical climate and using that to give a fairly realistic projection 10 years into the future of a world that could possibly exist. It's not so farcical in its um, scope that is something that people will think is implausible. And I think that's the that's the part where I was like, whoa, that is like really good storytelling where you have this mapped out and you're actually using your own acumen as um, a journalist to, to bring into fiction to create something that works. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, I mean, as and as people know, you know, obviously the main selling point of Ag Agent Poso is my rugged good looks, my sense of humor, <laughs> my, you know, you know my beautiful family, but it's not just about that. It's not just about that. no. It's uh, uh. So one thing that we we sat down and we decided we wanted to do is let's take a world and kind of fast forward things. Um, we can see the world the way it is today, but let's fast forward things ten years in the future and take a peek at how things might be if. And, and this, this is this is one thing that was kind of interesting. If if things don't go so well, let's say let's see what happens if if things kind of play out in a. Uh, in sort of sort of a negative um, situation where you know, which of course presents a lot of opportunities and a lot of need for a team like Task Force Aegis, which is sort of our you know Mission Impossible type force in the in the story to arise, right? Um, so you know, let's take a lot of the conflicts that are currently brewing around the world and then fast forward them to not that extreme. And by the way, I don't mean extremes like world war and, and i didn't want to go something like you know countries you know really breaking up that sort of thing but take it so that it's just sort of like a little bit of a twist for it so what do i mean by that and it's 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 actually funny because you know timothy we were having that conversation two weeks ago right and now all of a sudden this week i feel like that's what everybody is talking about 
Correct. Yeah, so, so one of the biggest things that I talked about was that I wanted there to be, um, not I wanted, but that I in the book there's going to be in the world of of uh, page and post the task force ages and years in the future that there's going to be a greatly expansionist China, that China will have expanded, uh, will have subsumed Hong Kong. Uh, will have subsumed probably most of the Korean Peninsula, if not all. Uh, we were we were joking earlier that you know they've they've uh, got Vladivostok and Siberia, the Kamchatka Peninsula from Russia. They haven't they haven't conquered it. They're leasing it because Russia needs the money, uh, and so so China's got all that land up there. And that they've also gone forward and not and control they're in control of the not just the Korean Peninsula but the Taiwanese Peninsula. Taiwanese Peninsula. What Taiwanese Peninsula? Don't you mean the Southern Island? No. Remember, China is building all these islands in the South China Sea. Well, in this version, China has gone forward and built a land bridge between the mainland and Taiwan, and is now in control of all. And right, and that's the thing is, yeah. is yeah. everyone goes, yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, that's that's not that far off, right? And so we were talking about that two weeks ago. Uh, it was the first time I think we ever talked about it publicly. And then ESPN yesterday <laughs> shows this map. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see that map that ESPN showed? No, yeah, I did. You saw yeah. it, Brett? So yeah, ESPN, yeah, blew my mind. ESPN showed a map of exactly what I was talking about. They showed a map of China that doesn't exist in the real world, but is the Chinese claims and territorial claims to Taiwan, to the South China Sea, to parts of India, Arul Pradesh, uh, it's, sort of, it's sort of this disputed border area, and... Uh, and to Hong Kong, right? And it's like, God, this is exactly what I was talking about. So you know, you've got ESPN, which is owned by Disney, one of the major companies in the world, one of the top five media companies in the world that is absolutely capitulating to these Chinese demands. And they're posting that up on ESPN, as we've seen everything with the NBA this week. So ESPN is backing a, an extreme version of the Chinese uh, territorial and nautical claims, maritime claims, in in their region and so i'm sitting here like yeah you know for a guy that's looked at china as long as i have i lived there for two years i worked at the shanghai chamber of commerce uh, i speak fluent mandarin i mean this is china's plan right and now espn is already going along with it and so anyone who's studied this issue who's looked at this for a long time you know we say yeah this is exactly what they've been working on towards for 10 years yeah it's well, just amazing either. to me how fast that that I guess we're we're kowtowing to this with our big media corporations here in the U.S. It's like, yeah, you know, I guess I guess they've been slowly bought with their entertainment over the years, but it's just like, it, it all of a sudden it's boom, 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 banning this, banning that. They're, they're really making big strides, and I'm wondering because Dinah Dinah brought up a good point in the chat here, saying uh, that that China is dangerous, but China is also low on money. Um, I wonder if I wonder if they're really trying to exert their force while that while they can in order to like. I guess slow the cultural change they see happening in their own uh, country uh, in order to make sure nothing escalates uh, on their end. And this is sort of uh, a desperation effort. I mean, I, I know Trump tweeted this morning that he's in big negotiations with China today. It it's, uh, seems uh, seems pretty interesting. Right, right, right. And that's that's exactly why what I'm saying is in our version, this is sort of a world where things go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this is a world where uh, the United States loses the trade war with China, put it that way. This is what if, you know, uh, you know, everything that Trump is trying, um, for whatever reason, it doesn't work. And that's what we're saying in 10 years, this is a post-Trump future. And uh, it's something where we have to deal with the fallout of, of everything that's, that's gone wrong. Uh, and essentially, China is completely expansionist and they win the trade war. Um, and we saw this coming, by the way. This this was the original plan. Um, we remember we always heard that that refrain of the managed decline of America. The managed decline. Remember that refrain from the Obama years? It's the managed decline. The, the economy's soft. Those those jobs aren't coming back. Remember, uh, and uh, you know you just have to go learn to code and do other things. And, and that's that's what's all. They would point the finger at you and say this. So, what is the world that those people wanted, and what would that world look like? Mm. Awesome. What's what's the world that Hillary would have given us? You know, right? The or, world that Hillary would give us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're we're basically one election away uh, in an election year from that kind of potential outcome in ten to fifteen years. And um, 
you know, I wanted to have some real world elements <clears throat> in this story because I think that's interesting. Um, you know, however, I also wanted want it to be action orientated and entertaining and fun. The same as uh, Mission Impossible and Man from Uncle and all my favorite espionage action movies. But I love the element of it being set 10 years in the future and, uh, you know, having this um, kind of um, scenario where things don't really work out for the West. They, you know, the, uh, the stakes are ratcheted up and they're higher than ever. And, uh, you know, Western civilization, Western culture, America is really hanging in the balance. And I think that's something that's um, still a potential, you know, because, you know, it's, it's kind of like you look out on the horizon, even beyond Trump. And I think all of us can kind of see a post-Trump era in Washington reverting back to what we had before. It's very similar to what happened after Reagan left office. You had the uh, kindler, gentler America, which <laughs> was coined by uh, George H.W. Bush, to which Reagan said, kindler and gentler than what? You know, <laughs> you know uh, Neil Young called it the kindler, gentler machine gun hand in uh, Keep on Rocking in the Free World. <laughs> And, and you saw that, you saw the swamp, the deep state, which weren't in the nomenclature back then, but they crept back in. Reagan drove them out to a large degree as much as he could, but they, they crept back in. And I kind of, you know, the stakes are gonna go, you know, way high. One, thing, one thing that looks absolutely prescient now is, and I go back to two weeks ago, Timothy, the thing we were talking about, do you remember what I said about the Middle East? Um, about which, uh, the countries that control what and how you're like well there's a like greece who controls um well, not, not just greece but but the middle east itself you'll have to refresh my memory all right go if you go back to that this is uh, people are gonna be like how did you guess this Poso? how did you know right two weeks ago i said that what we're gonna have in this world is essentially a neo ottoman empire a caliphate that is controlled by turkey and I wasn't sure exactly what, what the lines of that would look like, but that was going to be the one that would dominate the Middle East. It would be a neo-Ottoman empire that was controlled by Erdogan. And now what do we see going on this week? You study this stuff close enough and you realize, you, and you can just see it coming. Or maybe yeah, what's uh, happening, here, here's my theory. You were going, you were saying about ESPN, what if it's, all these world leaders they tuned into that chat and they were, and they saw your agent poso story and they're like oh this has got okay to happen so it it's like the scott bad. adams effect where well, they were like, taking notes they were yeah taking they were notes. taking notes exactly oh, some God. guy at espn was like i like this let's, we're, let's we're, this we're 10 bucks on the stream now from crossing this to the 31k level yeah, and yep. i promise i promise jack that we get there on the stream so somebody needs to back it right now to make that happen because i always fulfill my promises this is very important uh and that and that's uh even though it's not something i can control at the moment uh, it is uh, it is something that's got to be promised. We also I got I got to pause because we got our first super chat on the channel. Hey. Whoa! This is, congratulations. This is a super chat channel now, and that's what <laughs> we're going to be about from now on is super chats and not right. comics anymore because that's yeah. how this rolls. That's how it um, works. That's what all the kids are doing. Um, and and uh, Sergeant Bats, thank you, Sergeant. Says two ba two bucks for dumbing Meta Girl for Militia. I have no idea what you mean. I think you mean dumping Meta Girl for Militia because. Uh, this is very interesting. So we have a, um, I guess, like a, a slightly incestuous community in that I've got my comic, Flying Sparks, of course, which uh, is drawn by Jethro Morales. And and Chuck Dixon, your writer, uh, actually is coming out with, in comic shops right now, a comic with Jethro Morales as the artist called Militia. Mm -hmm. And both feature a hot blonde girl as the lead. And uh, Sergeant Bass believes the hot blonde girl in Militia is now hotter than Meta Girl. I disagree based on the body pillow because I, I have my own body pillow of Meta Girl uh, for sale, and uh, Miss Sashi drew that. And Miss Sashi draws characters hotter than anybody else in the entire the industry. Best looking body pillow I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, can can you put it up? Can we see this? Oh, you can, can, body we, can we judge? You can't just describe it. I, I mean, I hey, mean, John, that was a radio. This is radio. That was a stretch goal, correct? The that body was pillow. Yeah, I said if we funded day one, we'd get a body pillow. And so right. my right. my people made me do this. Let me pull this up. Whoops, I just got rid of Tim again. Sorry. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> That's okay. It happens. Hey, we it keep happens. getting rid of Tim. It's always it's always he's always the one. It's, I vanished it's, out of the rabbit hole. 
Now, uh, are, there, are, are there any plans for a Jack Posobiec body pillow? We could do a Jack Posobiec body pillow. Hey, John, how big is that thing? This thing uh, is a full body pillow length, so it's. Uh, it, I think it's described in here. It is uh, 21 inches by 60 inches. So you get a five foot meta girl that's uh, that's a life size for you to cuddle. Uh, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should do we should do a Jack Posobiec punching bag for for all the enemies of Poso. There you That's go. Actually pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> you can do oh that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you have so a body get, pillow for all, for all my haters. Bag. They can get um, yeah. They can get they can get take a free shot at Poso and it'll be. But it's one of those ones where not a punching bag, but like um, what's the one where you punch it and it like goes back and it comes up? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I had one of those as a kid. It was a pop. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Like pop, I don't know what they're called. I don't know what it's called. And it just laughs. Them up. It's, just, it's just me laughing. It's just, you punch it. goes, ha, 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 ha. You punch it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so here's the chick on Militia. Oh, cool. And, and here's Meta Girl. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Do you want the chick with the guns? Or do you want the chick who's like, you know, there? Yeah, I'm just a sucker for Miss Sashi's uh, artwork. She's really <laughs> talented. So... It's, 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 uh, I, I got to roll with her. Wait, let me see. Uh, Baron, 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 Baron von Metz wants, uh, Jack Posobiec printed toilet paper. So <laughs> that's a tear. That's right. a tear. That's a tear. That's a tear. <laughs> you want the gun girl again. Uh, so here's the gun girl. They've got a few different images of her. This one might be a little hotter. I like this one better personally. Um, what else we got? There's not, oh, there's look not at her she planks. Definitely. Definitely good abs there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry for the distraction. That was a total, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I gotta, I gotta go with the guns. I gotta go with the guns. If I gotta, you gotta go with the guns, gun. man, It'd be more useful in a zombie apocalypse. Brute. Right. Going it back is. to agent Poe. So on the first page that you have on your campaign, I was actually kind of sad that that guy in the back seat, the climatologist was not me. You're uh -huh. not a climatologist, Timothy, <laughs> but this is 10 years in the future. You're gonna get another degree. Make it, Tim? Make it a. Uh, are you are you studying? It it? Are, you, are you working on your your climatology research? I am. I'm getting my I'm getting my PhD in. You know, you're the in, second person who said that to me. In gender climatology. But you're literally the second gender person who said that to me because I know. Do you guys know um, uh, uh, Gregory Wrightstone, who writes the Inconvenient Facts series? No. No. So he's he's kind of like is he a nonfiction writer, but he he does like a lot of stuff, sort of debunking like climate change, the hockey stick, uh, the, like like climate gate and all that. Um, and he's got like a really really popular. That looks like you, Tim. He's been on Laura a few times. Uh, no, that's Park. That's Park. Yeah. What if Park, say, why what if Park is Tim's to? code name? What if Lim? Park is Tim's code name? I like how he speaks in <laughs> he speaks in the same broken English that I do. Also, why you want me? I just climatologist. Wow, disavow, disavow, disavow. <laughs> Tim, you sound like Jimmy Wang doing the, on uh, Silicon Valley <laughs> when you do that. Completely special. disavow. Tim, you're absolutely disavowed. Okay. Special, special occasion. Do, does anybody watch Silicon Valley? Uh, when what, what's what's uh, Jimmy Jimmy Wang is on that? He's the funniest part of that of that show. He's the I, Asian I can't watch roommate. Silicon Valley when I live here, it's it's just too depressing. It's it's too close to home. Yeah. <laughs> No, I hear you. No, it's funny though. He does, you know, Asians can make fun of Asians, you know, and then everybody can make fun of uh, white rednecks out in the South, but everybody else is off limits, I guess. It's, that's how it goes. Hans Sean says, congrats on being able to receive Super Chats now, John, and sent a Super Chat. So thank you, Hans. Appreciate that. Uh, cool. God Save the Stream says he will be supporting Agent Poso soon. Do it thank now. You. Don't wait. Right, do it now. Do it now. I, I want $10 while we're live. $10 while we're live. Well, well John, we've got, John, we've got a bunch of uh, tiers where you can get drawn into the book. You know, we, we did, um, we did pulled some, some ideas from tr which were successful at Trump Space Force. And uh, there, there's a number of tiers in there where we have a walk on role. We have um, a speaking role. So there's, um, we, you know, we have um, Red Pill Buddy which is the uh, bundle package where you get two of everything. So you can get something for yourself and go out and uh, get something for someone else. We really tried to, uh, uh, you know, make the tiers uh, as creative as possible. And part of that was let's get the audience and the backers involved as much as possible. And, you know, so much so is let's, let's let them star in the book. Um, but uh, if you buy above a certain tier, I think it's, um, 
think it's the fifty dollar tier. Uh, I forget which one. I've got to look. But um, you're basically going to get listed in the book. Uh, we have a, a number of different um, tiers where you'll be listed. There's the intelligence officer. There's uh, there's the uh, special ops. There's a whole range of them. But uh, we wanted to list all of the backers uh, in the book. So you know, you know, kind of like producers and executive producers get listed in movies because this crowdfunding effort is so much about going around the gatekeepers, going around the middlemen, which in our case is Marvel, DC Comics, the comic book industry, as well as just Hollywood, uh, the corp, the corporations, which are the ones who deem what is worthy to be produced. You know, they don't actually, matter. Um, I've actually had people, I've seen people changing their uh, Twitter screen names to like whatever rank they've backed on. Um, so people are like, you know, agent or mission, you know, yeah. mission officer, Jim uh, or uh, communications officer. You buy into that, officer, you get a special uh, officer. Yeah. yeah and people are special recording from Jack. That's super fun. So yeah, people are putting on. So, so I, wanted, I want to make it fun, right? I wanted to make this something where it was open to everybody. And uh, oh, by the way, one of the perks that's that's really, really cool. And I'm still waiting to get mine, by the way, um, which we haven't started doing um, doing the perks yet. But we're actually doing embroidered patches for um, for the backers. And that's that's like even that. at the 20 starting at the twenty five dollar level. Everybody gets a patch. Yeah, you guys did that on Space Force, too. That was pretty sweet. They, they love the patch, man. And yeah. I wanted to um, we, we came up with a really cool insignia, Bob Stone who uh, also did the uh, Jawbreakers logo and a number of different logos. Uh, on just here a fantastic designer. But he designed the logo. He designed the patch. Uh, the patch is up top. I think it's in the galleries. You can click it's on in, it. Yeah, if you just see oh, it in the, it in the first year there. there yeah, it or not the first year, second There it is, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. I love it. I, want, I wanted be something important. like... Um, you know, sort of military, but at the same time, something sort of almost like a... Uh, and then, Brett, what, is it, is it embroidered patch. on the back? Is it... How does it work? Um, it's an embroidered patch, and I and I believe that um, uh, it's it's sewn on. It's it's the highest quality. It's the same the same quality that we did with Trump Space Force, because I wanted... Yeah. Those turned out so well, you know? You have two we options. mailed these out in a weird, nondescript envelope, like I got yeah. from my... Uh, my <laughs> that was so funny. I get this weird... I get this weird envelope, and it's, like, thicker than normal, right? And I'm like, is somebody sending me, like, you yeah, know, Mason or something? And uh, and I open it up, and it's the Trump Space Force patch. Yeah. <laughs> those, those all got shipped after, because we had uh, we had some issues with uh, with the production of them, and, and, it, and they got delayed. But um, these will all be in the same package, the same Gemini right. box with the comic and with the sticker because we also throw in an Agent Poso sticker. Uh, yeah, and so you get the sticker, the patch, that, and the comic. The, those patches, so our original patch maker was actually like a mom and pop shop um, that just down the street, mm -hmm. and they just could not handle, I guess, the production load that we had. So we went with one of the commercial printers that one of the comic book companies uses, and their, their turnaround time plus their price was incredible. And so those Trump Space Force patches... I think you can either iron them on or you can sew that sew them yourself. It doesn't really yeah. matter. So you get you get the best of both worlds depending on what your preference is. Yeah, that's I, I forgot about that. You can iron the ones on that we ordered as well, um, or, or sew them on. And those those patches are three inches in diameter. So it's you know it. I wanted something that could go on a hat or go on mm -hmm. you know the shoulder of a jacket. Something that wasn't too big, too small, but just right. And um, I'm really looking forward to getting that thing because because those things the the design just turned out just awesome. I love it. Looks that sick. It looks like a legit military logo. It does. Um, it's, it's, I was um I remember at one point I was like looking up the logos of different units that I've served in in the military and then sending oh there it is hey. uh, and sending those to Brett and everyone for for the designs. But there it is, folks. There it is. Thirty-one. 31. Done. Wow. I fulfill my promises always. Yeah. Comes through. Ladushki. Comes through. Comes Thanks, through. everybody. I Comes through it. just there like is. Ukraine does for Boom. the Bidens. I come through just like Ukraine does for the Bidens. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Getting paid like Ukrainian gas expert, crackhead. <laughs> I, too, outsource all of my Ukrainian gas problems to crackhead sons of Joe Biden. <laughs> all right. I was gonna know it. They know where they really they, we get a slew of good chat now. Everybody, everybody's realized that super chats is a thing now. Uh oh, uh oh, guys, it begins. <laughs> super chats. Now you're a real comics creator. That's true. You have to have super chats to be a real comics creator. I learned this from comics creators that if you do not have super chats, you don't actually have comics. This is a real. No, you thing. don't. You don't even count if you don't have super chats. You're like zero count. Who's that? Yeah. 
Yeah, you're not, you're, you're you're not even a person. You were, you were still an NPC. Right. Or you're still right. an NPC until you go, well, you're, you're just, you're just a guy that exists. This one's for you, Jack, and, and this is going to be a tough question for you. When is Navy going to beat Army? Navy was beating Army for a decade straight, all right? So I don't want to, I don't need to hear when it's going to happen. Right now, we're in a period of leniency, and we're in a period of, you know, trying to do a little bit of favors, try to work on some camaraderie. But that is going to end very soon. And when right. that ends, it's going to go back to the way things are and the way things are always going to be. <laughs> Do you see uh, God's there Gate you go, the Street at 2.36? They say, um, hashtag enemies of Poso of a villain named Greta who screams, how dare you, and shuts down electricity and vehicles and equipment. So, really I mean, I, I'll just say this. So we were running the hashtag enemies of Poso contest, and it's, it's technically still running for, I think, two more days. And it was like, come up with the best enemy. Because if you look at all the artwork that we released, we haven't really shown who the villain is. We've just said that there's generally a climate change, eco-terrorist uh, sort of motif that we're going for. But we haven't talked about who the group is that we're going up against. And this came out with a climate change uh, topic, with a climate change theme. And we launched the same week that Greta spoke at the UN. <laughs> so the one thing that that really just rose into the top. And people have come, come in with, I think, hundreds of submissions about what type of enemies we should go up against from, you know, uh, from, you know, Chinese warlords to uh, cybernetic, you know, AI gone wrong from Silicon Valley uh, to, you know, clones of different things. But uh, the, the number one that people really wanna see when it comes to climate change, they say, look, you're 10 years in the future. Why don't you do some, why don't, I, what happens to Greta 10 years in the future, right? What does she become? Does she become the, the leader of an organization? And does that organization start challenging the West? And is it something the task force Aegis might have to respond to? So I'm not making any announcements right now. I'm just saying it's something that has been discussed. I think, I think Greta will still have pigtails 10 years in the future. I think, I think fans can expect a similar looking Greta. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like we go back and look at a picture of Donald Trump. Like he's always got the same hair. Like his yeah. whole life, he's got that hair, right? Yep. You, know, you don't you don't change uh, you don't change a trademark. You don't signature. Change, you don't change yeah. A trademark. Hey, you don't change signature. No, it's, 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 it's brand. business. I mean, that's that's been her parents' shtick, and they're they're actors doing their thing, and that's probably what she will end up grifting and doing uh, for the rest of her life. So, so exciting. She's got a bright young future, as the president says. So. <laughs> That was so funny. I, I remember when he did that. That was just that just cracked me up. It's the best tweet I've ever seen. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And it's and he just continues to top himself each and every day. It's quite 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 remarkable. Twenty twenty is gonna be uh well his best tweet crazy. was today when he said everybody needs to go watch one American news. Oh yeah. Dude, that, that was, was huge. Right. Yeah. 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 That was huge. I've been on One American News one time. Unfortunately, uh, Jack Posobiec did not invite me on. It was very sad. Uh, but I got to talk to Liz Wheeler, who is way Wait, how did you sneak on? I, I thought I told them. I mean, yeah, no. You tried to put it <laughs> what was going on? Yeah. Um, I got a... The, I got a I got banned on Twitter for saying um, uh oh I'm I'm monetized now I can't say what I said on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you committed wrong speak. Wrong, you committed wrong tweet. You committed uh, wrong tweet about the uh, LGBTQ WTF community, um, and uh, we don't want to uh, we don't want to uh, ever say anything about that community. So uh, so I got on and talked about censorship and all that. It was pretty fun. Uh, I like Liz better than you. Got to say so yeah. Well, I mean, you know, she's got more of an opinion show. All I do is break news and get scoops all day. Yeah, but yeah, but Liz doesn't have an Indiegogo with Chuck Dixon and Sergio Cariello and me. Ooh, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. No, you know. Blonde though, I like blondes. So yeah, I'm not a blonde. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. Uh, but I've got like, I mean, I've got. I go, you know, my wife is blonde. What can I say? Yeah. Well, and and you know, and, and Agent, Agent Tay Tanya is is a character. I, I I wanted to have an element of sort of a Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, you know, another, it was another influence that that I wanted to pull from because I, I I love that dynamic. And as you can see with the cover art, there's even white? Baby Jack with his uh, Baby Jack's got his night ops. Oh, nice! Oh, that's cute. NVGs, super cute. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so even in real life, I mean, Tanya was actually born in the Soviet Union. So uh, she has a Soviet birth certificate and everything. Now, her country, uh, Belarus, you know, broke off, got independence after the fall. But um, and I, I, I always joke, you know, she's Polish, but from the other side of the river, because uh, this was the part Belarus was the part of Poland that the Soviets took in World War II. Um, thanks, Molotov Ribbon Chop Pack. Uh, and so she's been in the U.S., she's a U.S. citizen, she's been here over a dozen years, but we wanted to sort of play that up, that she's got this international, you know, speaks every language kind of angle, which is also true, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there isn't really a European or Asian language, they just, she doesn't have, you know, a pretty good grasp of. I would make her go, say, moose and squirrel. Do you make her do that? I've never, I've literally never asked her to say moose and squirrel. Well, there you go. You're gonna do it tonight. So <laughs> moose, moose and squirrel. I don't know if she would get it. I don't even know if she would get it. So it's yeah, it's weird, wouldn't. like finding because there were some shows that like that got ported over and um, that ran on TV in Eastern Europe. Um, and so like she knows Darkwing Duck. She knows mm -hmm. Chip and Dale. Uh, it's like she knows some of the cartoons. They didn't run Boo Winkle. But they didn't run Bullwinkle. Yeah. They didn't run Rocky Bullwinkle. No. Amazingly enough, yeah. It says, Tanya beats Jennifer Lawrence in appearance, don't at me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, obviously. Okay, I, I appreciate that, but that's not really saying that much. Uh, come on. She's, <laughs> those, those Eastern European <laughs> girls. Not they, a J-Law really, fan. Not, they don't even, look a, like not even a little bit of a J-Law fan. Just, totally overrated. Yeah, to totally the, overrated. I just remember when it's overrated. I mean... Bring back we're, Rebecca we're, Romaine. We're at, we're at PG level, PG PG thirteen level, maybe here, right? We're at whatever you want to go at. I mean, I don't care. No, I just, <laughs> I sorry, just want to say that, like, like Jennifer Lawrence owes owes her career to Harvey Weinstein. I just, and it's yeah. just true. Like, it's just true, and it's it's just true. She she that's who she owes her career to, and had that not been now i'm not saying that she created that situation but that is the situation that she took part in and if that hadn't been the situation i don't know if she would be where she is i i agree she's, she's kind of just like a boring figure she's just like she's always talked very flat very da, 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 very not dynamic and blah 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 and and you know there's other things that are flat about her too um but you know i i agree so yeah if that if not for all of that you know, and then think of it, you got a situation now where someone like Jennifer Lawrence could become successful. Then now how many more people think, oh, well, if I go through this system, you know, how many more of these young actresses or starlets, you know, want to be starlets say, oh, well, this is what you have to do to get an Oscar. Well, Jennifer Lawrence did. And now look at her. Right. So you're setting up sort of this, uh, you know, toxic situation where now you've got proof of concept. So that what does that open the door for? And it's, it's, it's terrible. And it's very horrible. To see that that happened, and uh, you know, I'm glad that it's at least starting to get cleaned up. I want to burn down Hollywood and burn down uh, the mainstream comic industry. So, yeah, there we are. I Sell it. No, I mean Hollywood. Hashtag Hollywood sucks is kind of like the unofficial, uh, you know, slogan of our campaign. They're Good. they're like burning themselves down, you know, sure. and, and they and they think they're going to like be able just to hop over to China and have two two billion viewers. Uh, it's it's not going to work like that, you know. It's just not. I, I don't I don't see that happening. Um, but, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the more we can kind of take control of our own destiny and start creating our own content, the better. And, and that's kind of the, the whole point of this. And, oh, I, I just realized I never wa I never finished walking through the map of the uh, the world. Do you guys want me to round that out real quick? Yeah, let me, let me get my two super chats that are in first and then, then we'll do that. Boom, uh, do GOP Gamer says, I'm here to throw a super chat at you, John. Now dance for me. Dance, I say. Uh, he sent me $5 in super chat, so I think I have to dance. Dance I gotta, the like, jig. Dance $5 a jig. Dance. This is a $5 dance. This is a $5 I, dance. I, I can floss real quick if that's still a thing, but probably not. Um, so there's that. There's <laughs> the robot. Dance. Um, and then, um, then Sam says, buy the stars and twine to get John to write a sequel. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my, one of my sci-fi books. Um, I probably, if, if I get like 50 or more sales or so, I'll probably, I'll probably start thinking about writing a sequel. So there's, there's the metric for you. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's walk through the world here. So, okay. Two big things, uh, pretty big. So Europe, right? Everybody's talking about what's going on in Europe. We, we're, we're so concerned with how it's going. Parts of it look like they're going in a bad direction in Western Europe. But Eastern Europe 
it really seems has been somewhat stable. And people are now looking to the model of Eastern Europe and saying, you know what? Um, you know, obviously, you know, the communist economics didn't work out so well. Um, but are there some lesson, lessons from the cultural and social traditions of Eastern Europe that have led to a more stable country? I mean, look at a place like Poland right now, uh, 5% unemployment, 5% GDP growth. I mean, that's that's really strong for Europe, really strong for anywhere. Um, and so what what we're predicting uh, is that... Whoa, what's going on here? Is it because, is it, whoa, is that you? Let me see. I'm going to mute you real quick and see if that goes away. Did that go away? Jack, it's you. Bad. Uh, is it is it because Catholicism is is the superior race? <laughs> um, I don't know, but I mean, certainly it's <laughs> it's certainly Catholicism has when 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 done correctly, and I want to be clear about that when. Uh, when you don't have the the insanity going on from you know sort of the lavender mafia, that uh, it Catholicism does preserve traditions when they are adhered to, and I'm talking about the Catholicism of John Paul II uh, and you know the actual traditional uh, leaders of the church. And so essentially, what we're going to see is this, and in ten years, and keep in mind, I mean, we're we're you know it's 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 a sci-fi take on things. We are going to see a resurgence. Well, okay, actually, take it back. In Western Europe, you're going to see a fallen, broken, uh, you know, a lot of money, you know, place uh, a place of severe income equality. So the rich have a lot and the poor, it's, it's, it's you know, everyone else, it's, it's violent. There's, there are gang, roving gangs in the streets, uh, trash everywhere, you know, places like, like you can't really go to visit the, uh, uh, the Eiffel Tower, you know, if you're going to try to walk down um, one of the bridges in London, you know, there's security checks everywhere going on. I mean, and again, this is things that are happening in real life right now. Um, and so Western Europe is ruled by uh, the European Alliance, uh, which is, of course, head, headquartered out of Brussels. And it's sort of been morphed into this one uber state of Western Europe. However, uh, there's a split now between Eastern and Western Europe, like like we saw during the Cold War. However, with, instead of the you know, the Soviet Union, the Warsaw Pact, what you're now going to see in Eastern Europe, ready for it, is the resurgence and updating of the Polish-Hungarian Commonwealth state. Yes, Poland and Hungary are going to join together and others are going to flock to their banner of tradition, of culture, and of morals. So we're going to see that in the Polish-Hungarian Commonwealth. And then something that Timothy just mentioned uh, um, down in Greece, he said, but Jack, if there's a new caliphate, this is, this is what he said, if there's a new caliphate in a neo-Ottoman empire that's, that's run by Erdogan out of Turkey, what about Greece? Are they going to take Greece? Are they going to come across like they've always tried to? And I said, no, they tried to, but they were blocked because the Republic of Greece fell, the government of Greece fell, but it was replaced and they were kicked out by what? The, king of, the kingdom of Sparta. Hmm. Yes, the Spartans return, they take over all of Greece, and they stand strong against the Neo-Ottoman uh, Caliphate. That's awesome. Yes. I want to see that. I want to see that for real. Yeah, I know, right? There's a little <laughs> bit, you know, there's a little bit of like, hey, this these sound like good things too. So there's, you know, there's, there's bad and there's good, right? Mm -hmm. And then getting back to, you know, the big thing that I haven't mentioned, what about America, Jack? What's going on in America? Well, this is probably the biggest piece. And we haven't changed too much inside of the United States directly, because I mean, you could spend forever on that. But what we're going to do is uh, number one for sure, very cyberpunk style DC. Uh, that's no question. I mean, it's it's DC, but not the DC that you know and love. I mean, think Blade Runner, uh, think you know Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, but a new DC version of that. But the biggest thing for America is down on the border. And we keep talking about what's going on on the border. Is there going to be a border wall? You know, Trump says he's getting something built. He's keep replacing new stuff. They say the military is going to build it. Well, I actually went down and visited um, Brian Colfage's project, We Build the Wall project in El Paso not, not too long ago. And they told me something interesting. And I was talking to some of the builders down there. And they said, when we go to build a new section of wall, the first thing we have to do is set up plexiglass and like triple thick plexiglass. I said, what do you got to do that for? I mean, what is that? Does that serve some kind of building purpose? I don't understand. And they said, no, we do that because it's bulletproof 
because Mexican snipers from the cartels up in the hills will be shooting at us as we're going to build the wall. Hey. How what? come people don't know? I've never even heard this. Right. I'm like, how is that not your headline, dude? Mm -hmm. Like this should be that's, like the that's number one thing of America about. trying to trying to kill our people on the border. That's insane. Right. So that to me was insane. So I, I kind of took that, I, but I, that story has never left me. Um, and so I, and by the way, so when I was down there, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, was coming down to speak at this, uh, this sort of symposium that was going on at the wall uh, that Bannon put together. And when he came in, they actually had to bring all like the, the, uh, the backhoes and ditch diggers and all the uh, dump trucks and line them up between where he was speaking and then there's a tent and the border itself because they wanted the secret service wanted there to be a physical barrier um even more than just the slat something that would protect bullets from the mexican side to where donald trump jr was going to be wow and i said i had no idea it was that violent and they and to that to them they're like yeah that's that's just what it's like i mean if you did you didn't know that and it's like it's like i'm you know stupid for not knowing it I didn't know. I mean, people don't talk about that. And so 10 years in the future, here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. And again, I'm, I'm telling you, that's what I was told when I was there. All right. <clears throat> you know, uh, I would have to go. I'm, I'm not saying I'm reporting it that as news. I'm saying that's what I was told anecdotally when I was there. Um, but I'm taking that into the future and saying, what happens if the border wall as it's being built, the cartels decide in a sort of Rambo, th uh, I guess, what, five? Um, mm -hmm. in a, a Rambo style, Last Blood style, they declare war on the wall. And so the cartels rise up and they say, we're not going to permit this anymore and we're going to take control of this area. So they turn the entire border zone into essentially uh, a Sinaloa controlled area, like Sinaloa land. And then the U.S. and Mexico respond by militarizing the border for real on both sides and essentially create a U.S.-Mexico demilitarized zone. I would love that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, know, there, there, are, uh, there are areas down here in Arizona as well as New Mexico where um, there will be signs, and you can Google this, and it basically says you're entering an area which is not controlled by the US government. There's heavy cartel activity. There's heavy cartel traffic. You're on your own. I mean, we essentially have ceded territory, largely uh, some of it private, most of it um, uh, government and state lands. You know, the, the, there's a lot of BLM land out there down here south of me. And there are areas that have been ceded to the cartels and the cartels hey, bro, when I was, when I was down freely. in Arizona for training at, at Fort Huachuca, which yeah. is uh, south of Tucson, yeah. uh, I remember seeing those signs. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what we're talking about has already happened, you know, and it's on, and that's on our side. This is not on the Mexican side. This is on the American side where we have said, we can't control this area. You're on your own. And they have, um, a lot of the times they'll have spotters. Uh, the the the, uh, the Sinaloa cartel and the coyotes they work together and they put these spotters up in the hills and up in the mountains and basically they just sit up there with supplies and food and water and they watch for border patrol they watch yeah for they would call the border patrol would we used to used to have a phrase where they would say they would say there's the border and then there's the real border yeah <laughs> right like, and the border is like the like the internationally recognized border but the real border was like ten miles north yeah yeah because everything south of that all the towns all the land. You know, it's it's essentially already becoming a DMZ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I know people who have had who have had home invasions uh, with illegals. They come in. Fortunately, the the woman that I know wasn't hurt, and all they were looking for was food, water, money, and transportation. And they tied her up and took all that stuff and just took yeah, off. Yeah. When you, you get people in so. that situation of desperation, of need, of, uh, you, you know, Maslow's hierarchy, right, kicks in. And to say, you know, if I'm starving, I'm walking through the desert, you'll get someone who forgets about the rest of, you know, the things that they usually, put it this way, the societal mores start to break down. Oh, yeah. And you'll, you'll, and this, you, we've seen this throughout, um, throughout the world. This, this is it. 
cross-cultural. It's, it's just part of human nature that Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a real thing. And the minute you start removing things and you start putting pressure on that hierarchy, uh, people start acting in different ways. Yeah. And this, this desert down here, man, it is, it is hard and rough and, and dry. dry and hot, you know, even in the winter months, you know, and then at night you have a 20 point drop. So it gets yep. super cold. So, you know, the idea that we're just going to allow people to continue to funnel through here is not compassionate. It's not safe. Um, it's a danger to us. It's a danger to them. And, you know, for our story, again, I just wanted to kind of take, you know, where we're the trajectory of where the world is heading in 10 to 15 years and just ratchet it up. And I just loved the idea of basically what North and South Korea have, the 38th parallel, you know, the DMZ, this area where, you know, you've got these 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 two imposing forces that are just head to head, and you know the the Korean War is just. Yeah, Brent, we still have to uh, we still have to look up that parallel. We said we were going to look up that parallel. Yeah, I wanted to, to I, I want to find, find out what, what parallel that is and and call it that because because I just find that I just find it fascinating as a potential future where Mexico and America finally come to the realization that the cartels run Mexico. Most of South America is a narco state. And these governments are just sock puppets. Um, you know, LARPers. we've seen the Mexican government start to LARPers. stand up. Call them LARPers. Right. LARPers. But, I like that. You know, yeah, and, they're, and we, they're government, they're they government are. political they LARPers. Mm -hmm. They're not government, they're LARPers. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, Mexico is probably, you know, at, at some point in time, and, and they haven't done it yet, but they've been starting to kind of stand up to the cartel and helping us, uh, you, know, you know, keep the traffic. And the caravans from coming across they're stopping them at their at their southern borders but what happens if all that collapses what happens if we have a president we have a congress that doesn't care about that stuff and things just go back to business as usual well you know that's where we are in 10 years and it's ratcheted up to the point where you have a militarized border and uh, because it's the only way to not only keep the cartel from uh you know destroying parts of the wall and 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 basically compromising the infrastructure but also um it's 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 uh you know the idea that like Mexico has to say we can't control this anymore so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to partner up with you guys and militarize this border it's the right only and you way. could you could you could e easily see and we were just talking about this before we got on the stream but you could easily see uh, in a future issue you know uh, the task force having to sort of cross the U S Mexico DMZ as part of some you know, operation going against human smugglers, child traffickers that are operating there because um, it's sort of a lawless area, right? That's just ruled by the cartels. And so, you know, what happens if say there's like a kidnapping or something that goes wrong and that you have a principal or their, their, their son or daughter, and then, you know, the task force gets called in to go and, you know, take care of it. Yeah, I, I, I love the idea. So, and, and I thought, um, I thought it'd be fun to uh, project in the future as well, you know, so we could reflect some of the real world events and tell a cautionary tale. Um, you know, it's obviously it's going to be fun. There's going to be action. And it's and it's very much I wanted also something with this book with Agent Postal. I wanted it to be black hat, white hat. I really wanted to have I really want to have some clear delineations between good and bad. You know, we have way too many characters and way too many IPs and movies out there, which you just have this moral ambiguity these beautiful shades of gray and I'm tired of that. I want unabashed heroes. I think, I think, I think the audience does as well. I think that we're all kind of hungry for someone who is an unabashed hero and fights. Uh, and yeah, and this is, this is cutting against the grain a little bit because it's not, you know, the thing that's, that's popular right now is anti-heroes, right? And even, even in the new Joker film, Joker is sort of cast as an anti-hero kind of thing. I don't know if it, if it quite got there, but that's what they're trying to do with it. But it's not like a Tony Soprano or Walter White, uh, or even uh, I guess this new Mandalorian that Disney Plus is pushing. Boba Fett was always an anti-hero sort of character, and so you know we're we're not doing that, right? We're this you know these guys they stand up for you know truth, justice in the American way, right? You know because it's almost become such a situation. It's gotten so bad in Hollywood that standing up for traditional values is actually counterculture now yeah I, I picked up a dc comic this week i'm, I'm ashamed to say oh one man of my, one of opposition my buddies research opposition buddy, research one of my buddies wrote a short story in it i won't name him and uh 
there, I, I, I read through it just because I haven't read through any of this stuff in a while. And it is market research to some degree because I'm doing this, right? And I, I'm trying to see what they're doing. They actually had like a, a story in there that it's like Martian Manhunter was like in the swamp and these like monsters were going around and scaring people and everybody's, everybody's doing that. And Manhunter goes up and uh, fights this like really bizarre alien monster with like weird tendrils, things like that, and, and, and gets engaged with him. And then he telepathically gets in there with the monster alien and it's an alien from outer space. And uh, he, he learns through telepathic uh, communication that the alien's actually just a father with children trying to immigrate somewhere from a war torn area. <laughs> I'm dead serious. And he stops fighting the guy and he goes, sometimes the real monsters are just within ourselves. And I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. That's that's really artistic. You're know, taking a lot of artistic risk. It's that heavy handed, that bad. This I mean, that's just so preachy, yeah. so blatant. Like, yeah. It's, how, do uh, you dis how do you disrespect your your audience like that? How do you, you know, have they that? Used to be, I, I don't, that's they I used understand. to be so much better at, at keeping it covert, keeping that messaging more subversive and yeah, and, it's, and, it's and not subliminal anymore it's liminal yeah, now it is it's it's completely covert it's overt it's ham fisted it's shoehorned it's basically just shoving it right in your face you know here you go you know and and people it's like are just that scene like, in uh okay. in i guess it was the deleted scene but then it went viral of captain marvel where she like that guy asks her out and she breaks his arm yeah yeah. yeah, and they're they're like comparing it to the the term. He's like, he's like, hey, can I get your number? And she's like, maybe you can get this. And she's like, maybe it's his fingers or whatever. And she like crushes it, breaks him. They're like, oh, oh why'd you do that? And she's like, man, no, oh. no man tells me what to do. So uh, I was like asking you for your number. What do you? <laughs> I guess that's how I guess that's how aliens react on you know, or the Cree react to each other or something. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't get that either. I was just sort of like, what is all this? <laughs> Yeah, you know, like this, you say the Cree, it's the it's more like the Cree. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the re, it's just the re, it's just the re. Yeah. The other thing, by the way, we were doing um, we were doing this the other day. They said, Oh, it's finally time for women in, in, to take a role in science fiction. I'm like, have you ever read science fiction before? Have you ever seen a science fiction franchise? There's women everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. From yeah. from you, from you promise, you promise oh, yeah, I mean, just go to Samus, go down the list. Do you promise that Agent Poso has a strong male lead? I do. I got multiple, <laughs> actually. A strong, a strong white male Christian lead. Yeah. Who will oh, never be uh, gender swapped. You know, I was on a uh, I was on a podcast last night, and they said they said Jack, what happens if if you sell the movie rights to this and they gender swap you? And I said, then we riot. <laughs> Then we riot. That's going to be a clause in the contract. See, they'll, no, it's they'll gonna, be, be in the contract. No, we're never. There'll, there'll be a sunset clause. So if somebody buys this, they won't be able to sit on it forever, I which mean, is what happens all the time in Hollywood. People buy scripts, they buy things, and they just sit on them. And that's what happened to Brad Thor. You know, he sold his right. best selling character and uh, to Sony, I think, and they're just sitting on it. And I told Brad, I said, that's never going to get made. I just said, you should have put a sunset clause in there. So at least if. There's a trigger, you know, and they basically got to act on it by a certain date, or the rights rights revert back uh, to him. Uh, on women in science fiction, I'm 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 pretty good friends with Anne McCaffrey's uh, son oh, wow. and, and and that family for a long time. Oh, wow. They've had their they've had the Pern movie in contract and yeah. and optioned since like 1981, I know. and there's been no Pern movie. It's insane. <laughs> Yeah, she, she's a genius yeah. in sci-fi and was so ahead of the time. Those books were written in the seventies, right? And then they, and then I think some in the eighties, but they became popular in the eighties. It's one of the most fantastic series. My favorite is the White Dragon. Great, um, great book. Yeah, but, but why aren't you know? I you know you look why around. Why is there not a movie of that? It doesn't make sense. I yeah. mean, even right. even you go back to Dragon Slayer, which has fantastic special Especially effects. When like they're and I hate to say it, but like Amazon. And Prime is like making shows based on like lesser series. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean, I, I don't know. I, I tried. What was it? The Carnival Row or whatever. And Did I, you try I, that? I tried it. I, yeah. And I. I like The Boys. I thought The Boys was really well done. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. I've heard that. And I was like, but there's so. and I, But it just blew my mind because I said there's so many other good series out there that are just sitting and that yeah. nobody seems to want to adapt when we know that they're better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're sitting in that in that base basically where where uh, Anne's books are is in that developmental purgatory, that developmental hell, where you're just kind of stuck, 
Um, and, and they're probably, it, the rights are probably owned by somebody who's holding out for a, for a big price, they, you know that's what happens is somebody will buy these things and they'll hold out for the studio or somebody to come in and say, "Hey, I'll give you a million dollars for that," you know, or two million dollars. So, but yeah. it's it's a shame because those books are fantastic and um, there's so much, you know, there's so much great stuff out there that's new, even though that's old. But it, that's not going to be a rehash. I'm just so sick and tired of all of the reboots and the remakes. Um, that was another reason why we wanted to do Agent Poso was. Let's tell a new story, even though this, is, this has some core influences from Bond and Born and Man From U.N.C.L.E., no doubt. Uh, let's make it our own. Let's make it original. But, you know, we have new characters. We have new stories, new settings, new villains, which I think is probably one of the more exciting things because the villain is only as good as the hero and vice versa. So I wanted, a, I wanted something that was, um, you know, a globalist cabal, which, which, again, is something similar to what's going on in, in the real world. But again, let's ratchet it up and let's go 10 years into the future with kind of a, uh, a darker uh, kind of outcome. And uh, because, you know, for this, for Task Force Ages, the stakes have got to be high in, in order for, I think, to tell a really compelling story. So. Yeah, I, I really appreciate what you said a couple hours ago on Facebook. And since this is public, I, I hope it's okay if I read this. Go ahead. Um, yeah, and you've been, you've been beating this message just like I have for, since the beginning here. Um, and you say, I want to see less complaining about Hollywood, Marvel, and DC, and more backing and support for creator-owned projects, which are being made as a healthy alternative for the garbage which comes out of the entertainment industry. Complaining does nothing. Backing creators who support you and who are creating content for you is how we change things. If you have already backed Agent Pozo, thank you. If you haven't become part of the solution, if you haven't become part of the solution. And I, that's it. That's the whole message. I love it. You know, it's uh, it's upon us to take our destiny into our own hands. And at this point, Marvel and DC are gone. It's over with. Everybody needs to accept that. You know, I feel like I'm watching people go through the stages of grief yeah. with Marvel and DC. And, and people have not come to the acceptance part. But it's over. They're not going to change. No, I don't care how much you complain. I don't care what you say. They You're gonna are get that Martian man, man When I started, so back in back in 2016, I started the um, the hashtag uh, dump Star Wars, and <laughs> I remember, <laughs> and it went super viral, number one on Twitter, uh, I think worldwide, and it was definitely nationally, but I think it was worldwide too. And I was just talking about how they're dumping all this anti uh, Trump like social justice stuff into it, and it was being tar it was just going horrible. And remember, this is a year before Last Jedi comes out. And then Ryan Johnson got to the point where he started responding to me, but I was I was going after um, these uh, the writers of Rogue One who were saying that like uh, the Empire is based off of conservatives and Trump supporters, and, and they're all because they're all white nationalists, and they they were all putting that like it was like the Rebel Alliance insignia with the paperclip or the safety pin, whatever that was. Yeah. And that was like this <laughs> yeah. thing. It's so stupid. I don't even so know what stupid. that is. Right? It didn't even it went like. What 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 movement is going to rally behind the the safety clip, right? <laughs> oh, we're the safety clippers. Yeah, that's just like no, like the, the, the comic. You going to buy a comic that's got somebody with a safety clip on the front? What is it, Milton from the Office, mm -hmm. uh, Office Space? Yeah. No, no, obviously, my stapler. Um, no, <laughs> that's that's not for a movement. So I was I was just fighting back. I was like, dump Star Wars. I'm sick of these people. Ryan Johnson comes at me and he posts a picture of like uh, uh, Carrie Fisher, like giving the middle finger. And I wrote back, I said, Ryan, you are going to ruin Star Wars with this crap. And he blocked me a year before Last Jedi came out. So I'm just sitting here like, I told you, I, to I told you, y'all didn't want to believe me. You didn't want to believe me in 2016. Him. And now look, look who all believes me. Well, I, and I read yep. today that he's finally out. He doesn't really have a future. He's been out. He's been out for so long. Like, yeah. I, why do people believe Kathleen Kennedy's crap anymore? He's uh, out. She's on the ropes. Yeah, uh, she is. JJ is trying to do anything he can to get it together. Benioff and Weiss, who, by the way, as I just said, the Game of Thrones writers, I was doing a blog against them in 2012 <laughs> talking about uh, how those guys shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a franchise. Um, though I do actually appreciate Benioff's book, uh, City of Thieves. Maybe I think you should go back to the novel. Well, he's, he's quite, he, actually quite good at that. He's a right of center guy. His dad worked for the Bush administration. Right, right, right. So but they were both making, of them are actually. I, so I know a guy. Quarters, 
towards the end there in HBO where I'm like, guys, like what's going on? And then you, Jack, you saw season they eight. didn't they didn't know what the hell did they, they, I think I got the feeling with that with the last two seasons of Game of Thrones that nearly everybody on that show wanted off. It, you know, it takes yeah. up ten years of your life. Um, it, it, it reminded me of something John Hamm said when when DC approached him or some people approached him about uh, Superman. I think they wanted him to play an aging Superman, which um, he'd probably make a good one from a visual standpoint. Uh, but he said. He's like, I'm 40 something. If I sign one of those contracts, that's 10 years of my life, man. And I and I can't do much outside of it. Um, look at um uh you know Wolverine, uh drug. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, he's been stuck with that for 15 years. And he, he wants exactly. out. But but I, I got the feeling that they all wanted out. And 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 I and I also got, you know, it's kind of like um uh, just from a creative standpoint, you know, you want to get out of this, you want to do something else. And and if you know that you've got a Star Wars project on the other side of this Game of Thrones last season, it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just finish this crap and move on to Star Wars. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I think there's a lot of that going on. I think there's the a lot of that going on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and, and from the business standpoint, um, I'm sure that Disney and ABC and everybody over there was like, can you guys wrap this Game of Thrones crap up so we can get going on Star Wars? You know that they were rushing them and trying to get them to to to, to flip. I think you're uh, right on or, that. I think you're right on that. Yeah. So that's how that's kind of how I looked at it. I you know those that that last year I didn't read the books, so I didn't I didn't go in it with any real expectations. Um, however, I did call Jon Snow from season one. I was like, that's the guy. You know, I said, but he wasn't the guy. To me, the way they set it up, I it was just didn't sort matter. of like. That it didn't sense. matter. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. When we got to the end, it didn't matter. Uh, it was it was so anticlimactic. I, I was just sort of blown away, which is something that John and I have talked about from time to time. I find that the writers nowadays, you know, they they know how to how to write a, a first and a second act. What they don't know how to do is to write a third act, which has to be satisfying. You got to um, see the landing. That's the deal. Yeah, yeah. I always walk out of these movies. Very disappointed in the third act. It's, it's all um, sizzle, no steak. It's all shock, no substance. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, which is again. Oh my gosh, what a shocking moment! And then, like that trends on Twitter, but then it's like they just try to get more of those ups and downs, like a roller coaster. Like right. as you said, these are like roller coasters now. Mm -hmm. They're not or stories. video games. And, and it's all do. it's all yeah. visual effects based more than more than story based. And, and yeah, people absolutely. Are visual character actor driven. It's there's where's the, the story? Vi the villains suck though. None of these villains, not even really Thanos, makes me makes me makes me feel threatened. Mm -mm. And and just one back, the Thanos in the comic version from the the original Infinity Gauntlet was very threatening. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you look you look at all the Marvel characters in the comics, Ronan, whomever. They're all really bad guys, and you yeah. see them do bad things. And in these yeah. adaptations, yeah. they kind of make them all punchlines. Yes. Yeah. Right? They're just like a punchline for the hero to riff off of. Yeah. 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 I mean, at and least really Dark Knight memes Dark out of, Knight. too. Oh, What's sorry, that, Tim? Make dank memes out of, too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, though. That's what I mean. Like, we're, we're not <laughs> threatened. We don't feel threatened by the villains. We feel we like we want to mock them and laugh at them. Right. We laughing. parodied them later. It's hilarious, you know. And that's that's not something that people do with Darth Vader or with you know some you know some of the the better villains out there. But you know, it's like, what do you see Darth Vader do in the opening sequence? You know, he crushes some guy's neck like right in mm -hmm. front of you, um, and that's something that I don't see with with any of the villains nowadays. You don't really see them do anything that sets up that they're a bad guy. It's just kind of like there's all this exposition about how they're daughter. a bad guy. Well, it, it's all told to you. Oh, that Thanos, he's a it's bad told. guy. Take my yeah. word for it. You know, it's like, but why don't we see Thanos do some bad things or some really bad things? I'm, I'm never, I'm just never remember, threatened by anything. Uh, uh, this guy, the worst villain of all time has to be Supreme Leader Snoke. Oh, I yeah. Mean, what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> what is what that even, that even visually? Like, it looks, it just well, is like, are you uh, uh, less. Uh, are you a clone of the emperor that kind of went wrong in the uh, in the intelligence department or something? Or, or what? And he happened? wasn't much of a threat because look at how they took him out. Yeah, easy. Right, no threat, and that and there were there's this weird um, bungling of the way that they do Han and Leia's reunion. Or like, oh, it wasn't your fault. It was Snoke. Snoke's evil turns bad. It's like, what are you talking about? Who is Snoke? Snoke? Why do Snoke. why is how did he turn? Like, what is going on? 
and you're just it's it's this they're breaking the rule of of tell don't sh of tell not show right it's it's show don't tell right. right so don't tell me snoke is evil show me like show show me snoke wiping out a planet just like that you know, Vader and and uh, and Peter Cushing, yeah, you got that sequence where they they blow up the planet right in front of Leia, all, all, right off the bat. They show don't tell. You show that these are these are really bad guys, really bad. Uh, you, you know, Snoke always sounded to me it, it it killed the suspension of disbelief for me every time they yeah. said his name. I kept thinking of a Muppet. Like, like, isn't there a Muppet oh. named Snoke? <laughs> Just, or something? Isn't there some Muppet? I, I keep thinking of um, Gonzo or something, you know, with the... Snuffleupagus? Snuffleupagus, there you go. Snow. Tickle me, tickle me Snokey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the funny thing is that Snoke, um, I don't know, I just thought it was fun. I couldn't... When someone described him as, like, um, E.T. in a Hugh Hefner robe, I just couldn't <laughs> ask that. Because that's what he wore. He wore like that that really fancy sparkling the smoker's like, jacket. <laughs> smoker's jacket. He's just in the lounge with like. What would the clothes. what would the grotto of the first order look like? <laughs> you just have like those Twilight girls like running around. Like yeah, I wonder if the girl from um they do have the girl from uh uh oh god what was that sci-fi show? The bounty hunter show. Oh, Killjoys. Killjoys. Yeah, they got the girl from Killjoys is in there, so maybe she's down in the grotto. Yeah. Dutch. <laughs> but you know, they uh, you know from from the villain standpoint, uh, again, you know, with Agent Poso, I want uh, you know, I, I like the idea that things are ratcheted up and look bleak 10 years, 10 10 years in the future. You know, there's got to be a real threat. Um otherwise, you're just not drawn into the story. So, again, I wanted to have the um you know, we and, you know, and that is the plan to have have a right, and that's villain. That's all going to be defined, right? And we're going to show that, and you you even get a sense of that in just the pages that we've done so far that we've released. Um, uh, the two now three as of as of today, three pages that we've released. You know, you see this is a scrappy group. They're they're fighting against overwhelming odds. They're in austere conditions in you know in Mumbai. What's going on? You know, you see they've got some technology, but they don't have you know. You know, tanks and troops and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, task force agents isn't government. It's not a, it's not a federally funded thing. It's, it's a private organization. That was the other thing. I wanted something that was unlike Mission Impossible, which is all tied to the CIA. And what's happening with the IMF team? They're always being compromised from within. So I wanted a team that was independent, and yet that'll limit their capabilities. You know, they don't have all the tech and all the gear. Sometimes they just got to rely on elbow grease, you know, and sweat equity, you know, they've just got to, you know, get in there and it's down and dirty and get the job done. So much of what Bond turned into was relying on the gadgets and relying on all this tech and all this superior stuff that gives you an edge. Yeah, um, and you look at any of these, um, these series is like, like born, you know, is, is sort of a set in this way is, isn't it so much more compelling when they get cut off from all that stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's way more fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Skyfall. Skyfall, that's what I loved about Skyfall was that he was on right. his own, you know, and and basically he kind of had to revert back to just down and dirty tactics. Right. You, you've got survival. bare bones, you, you, you're basically looking at them, you know, kind of stripped naked and it's like, all right, you know, and this is something they do in, in uh, you know, special forces training. You know, they just kind of throw you in the woods with nothing and say, figure it out. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I mean, that's, uh, you know, and, and then, and then if you've got this, you know, you know, kind of dark, ominous future with with an enemy. Uh, you know, that's um, that has everything, that has all the tech, that has all the surveillance. That was the other thing that you know we're going to get into with Agent Poso is uh, and the cyberpunk uh, 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 through line is is the surveillance state. Um, and I was blown away the other day, yesterday, when I saw that mask that the Chinese are wearing, which projects yeah. another face, Jack. That that's like a piece of tech that we need to have in the comic. Oh yeah, you know. But I mean, oh, that yeah. was, that is so like when you're like, walking through a public area. It's 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 not quite as slick as the Mission Impossible. You know, it was the, that's the old thing. school Mission Impossible thing. But this is the, I like that better as a wearable. Yeah. So it's it's not meant to really work when you're close up. Right. Um. But it's something that it's just enough to fool the to keep one step ahead of the surveillance. Well, and the bad guys in our opening scene, they're being chased by this big uh, truck, which got a 50 cal on it. And the bad guys are um, Middle Easterners. Imagine that. 
And they're wearing masks, which actually digitally mask their identity. Because one of the things, if you read through the couple, first couple of pages, uh, Agent Poso asks Agent Fairbanks, Cassandra Fairbanks, hey, unmask these guys. Who are these guys? Tell us who they are. And she's like, hey, they've got some kind of weird tech that they're wearing over their face. And I, I, I can't do it. I can't, you know, there's, there's no way to know unless you get your right, hands right. on it. Right, right. Yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly like what we have there. Yeah. No, we'll see that because we'll see that these agents of the 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 neo, uh, you know, the neo Ottoman Caliphate, they're going to be working hand in hand with the eco terrorists who, and a lot of this funding is going to be coming from the Xi Dynasty, of course, you know, uh, in the new Chinese Empire, and uh, an obvious throughput, you know, sort of through route for all of that is is Silicon Valley. Yeah. Well, it sounds really great, guys. Uh, I'm excited. I'm glad that uh, some folk in the chat already are checking this out and back in the book. Um, I know a couple have said that they're going to get it a little later when they get a paycheck or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I uh, hope the stream helped out a lot. Um, if you like uh, what you heard today and want to change the culture for real, please back this book. Help out Brett and Jack and Chuck Dixon and Sergio, just great people all the way around, great artists and, and uh, just wonderful folk who we want to support. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and if you like, if you came here from Jack and, and haven't heard of me before, uh, my, my book justified and my comic book flying sparks is also down in that below. I hope you'll check it out too. And, uh, I think we'll have a good day here. Is it, is it anything else you guys want to say before you go? Oh, no, just appreciate the support. So awesome. We got to 31 more we're on the stream, uh, support independent creators, go to Indiegogo, hit that comics pay, you know, link and just see, see who else is on there. And if you see something that catches your eye, go support it because this is this is the anti Hollywood revolution. And we can't do it if we don't help each other. Yep, we don't yeah. we don't need no corporations. <laughs> hey, if conservatives if conservatives backed projects as much as they complained, we'd probably be well on our way to owning the culture. So it's you know we just got to get proactive. That's that's really what it comes down to, and um, at least with this book and just think with, of it as the thirty two pages of memes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that, yeah, that's you know, it's a good Poor point. Guys. That was the other thing I was gonna say. It's a thirty-two page book. So it's you know, you're you're getting something a little bit extra. And um uh you know, we I just appreciate everybody that's back so far. It me means a lot. And uh I just want to uh I, I just I just want to encourage everybody else out there to uh you know get active and get in the fight and uh let's create some content you know for all of us, you know, stuff that's specifically made for us that's that's wholesome and has a good message and is also fun and entertaining. Uh, it's, it's, it's all within our, within our reach. We just need to mobilize and organize and make it happen. And uh, I believe we can. Amen. So funny, thanks, John. Bunny really man, you guys, you guys, you've been quiet over there. Bunny? Tim. Tim. What'd you say? <laughs> like cut out for a minute. Like the, it was just like silence and I just hear Tim, Tim. <laughs> all right, that's Tim. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything to chill. Uh, I'm 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 done for the season, I guess. We're so just, uh, I love I it. Have channel, I have a channel called the Bunder Dome. So if anyone, uh, if we have some mutual friends and people who have not heard of it, I do. I try to have a nightly show called the Bunder Dome where we just talk shop. Uh, there's no drama or anything like that. It's just whatever we feel like is amusing. And we occasionally have some great guests on, like Jack Basovic, who was on two weeks ago. Nice. So that was a great show. Like Everyone should go watch it immediately. Mm -hmm. Cool. Immediately. immediately. Absolutely. Immediately. Yeah, I got to oh, jump on. Yeah. Make sure to talk about this, too. So the president, the president tweeted about One American News uh, today, about six hours ago, as Jack said um, a couple of minutes ago. So if you haven't subscribed to One American News, I always get really frustrated when I hear people say, oh, there's no alternative to Fox News. Oh, what was me? I wish it was. It's like, there is. There has been one for at least, you know, five years uh, for people who are counting. So make sure to subscribe to One American News. That's where you can see Jack Posobiec with Wheeler. Everyone on that show is fantastic. That is where you should go for your news. Yeah, yeah there it is, folks. One, you oh, don't have to then. You don't have to complain about Fox. You don't have to complain about Fox. You can go to OAN. You know, again, right. stop and complaining. Go to OANN.com. We're all about, you know, independent alternatives here. Um, if it, we're not carried by a local cable provider, we've got a variety of streaming services. We're the top paid app on Roku. Uh, we have our own streaming service called Cloud TV, which you can get worldwide. I've got friends in Poland and Sweden that watch us through there. Uh, so uh, I believe we can get us through Apple TV, Google TV. So there are no excuses. Come in and watch One American News.
Sure. And here's the, other, here's the other really good part about it is that you guys used to not have ads and now you do, but the ads, there's like two ads per like hour. It's like something crazy. And there is it's all like wholesome stuff like cruises. So like America. No, we got, no, we got more yeah, than just cruise ads, now. but but we do have we did have one, yeah, we did have one um big uh big sponsor that was you know partnership with the cruise line. That's right. All right, we'll end it there. Thanks for coming by, guys. And remember, if you cuck, you lose. <laughs>